Hello and welcome back. I'd like to start by focusing on what may appear at first to be just a minor point, but it's illustrative of how facts and chronology have been distorted to create a judgment so utterly divorced from reality. Paragraph 12 of the judgment includes the following as background to the case. When the claimants protested vigorously, the school excluded all their children. This was the result of the defendant's barrister, Jonathan Price of Doughty Street Chambers, trying to show in court that my wife and I were terrible parents and that the behavior that the school claimed was unacceptable was that we had created a website about the school, published our email correspondence on it, and even demonstrated outside the school. This, he stated, was so horrendous that the school had no choice but to expel our children to get rid of us. Except, that's not how it happened, and Price knew that very well. He deliberately reversed the cause and effect to paint a very different picture. If you look at titirangisteinermessenger.com for yourself, you'll see that the front page says this. It all started with the welcome page back on the 22nd of June 2009, two weeks after our children were expelled for being bullied. The first blog post is dated the 24th, and if you look at the videos on this site, you'll see it's very clear that we only protested after the expulsion, not before. But the skeptics among you may well say that all this can be made up. Dates can all too easily be altered. But here's something you can't fake. The Whois database. Go to whois.com, type in our site's address, and then click on Whois. This will tell you that our site was first registered on the 14th of June 2009. When were our children expelled? On the 5th of June. And when were we trespassed off the school for asking why? On the 8th. The true chronology, which has been in the public domain since 2009, is extremely clear. It's because the school excluded our children, without warning, that we protested vigorously. So what do you do when someone's done nothing wrong, but they must be vilified? You get your barrister, one whose chamber claims to promote human rights and civil liberties through the law, to spin a web of lies. And despite us pointing out the proper course of events, in court, the judge simply ignored us, bought those lies, repeated them in his judgment, and the illusion of justice is achieved. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.